When discussing how to achieve the minimum level of sadness, a great emphasis is often placed on moving groups from the abnormal to the normal, to de-queer the queers. I often hear of a goal of a world when no one is considered the weird one, a noble goal, you would think, given the bullying and exclusion that often follows those considered weird. But not all of us are capable of being normal. Normal is a set of social standards. Not everyone wants to or can fit them. It can seem like expanding normal a little bit can make things better to people, and it does, but only really for those who are white, abled, neurotypical, aloe, upper middle class, and gender conforming. And being a freak is okay. It's harmless weirdness. I'm a freak. And the only thing my freakiness has hurt is the feelings of this one true scum who responded to a random Tumblr post saying that I'm a trender, which is, of course, an absurd claim. I have never been on trend in my entire existence. So let me demonstrate how being a fucking weirdo is harmless by reading you a story. In 401 BCE, a Persian soldier by the name of Mithridates killed a rebel claimant to the throne, Cyprus the Younger. Upon Cyprus's death being reported to the king Ar Artaraxes, Mithridates was given rich rewards as thanks for securing his throne. However, Artaraxes wanted everyone to think that it was he who killed Cyprus, so this was done secretly. Later, at a banquet, Mithridates boasted that he killed Cyprus. This angered Artaraxes, who ordered that he most suffer a most unusual punishment known as scaphism. First, Mithridates was tied between two boats so that his hands, feet and head lay outside the boats. Then he was force-fed milk and honey. Then they covered his extremities in honey and left him in a stagnant lake. Then all manner of flies and other insects were attracted to the honey and began to feast first on the hoodie, then on his flesh. Every day, Atrax's men returned to feed him more milk and honey to prolong the torture. Eventually, he died of dehydration, septic shock, and heat stroke. According to Wikipedia, he lasted 17 days of this before dying. Now that's a fun story to tell. You are probably wondering why I chose to include this tale of war, torture, and death. Am I trying to alienate my audience? Maybe, I guess, I have both more patrons and more subscribers than one of my friends, and she makes better videos than me, so hopefully this will balance the scales. But I'm hurting no one but my subscriber count. I did a content warning, so you had the option not to listen to it, if it would make you uncomfortable. So, if I choose to spend a weird amount of time researching historical execution methods, that is my choice. But while I could choose not to do that, I can't choose not to be aromantic, to not be autistic, to not be non-binary, nor would I if given the choice. I'm the person who more respectable activists try to distance themselves from, because it's a lot harder to market to someone like me, someone who falls out of the normal way of being. Associating your products with sex or romance isn't going to work. I don't want to be the peak of femininity or masculinity that the gender binary demands I aspire to. I am not the ideal worker. But I also know, even if I sometimes forget, that I am still worth existing. I'm clever. I try to do the right thing. I work to learn and improve as a person. I'm a decent public speaker and really good at maths. Even if capitalism thinks I'm a piece of useless shit, I know I'm not. And that goes for all of you, dear squidlings, as well. You all have something cool about you. You all have a place in the void. And I promise you, you are all capable of doing awesome stuff. Right now, you might just be existing, trying not to fail at school or trying to make sure that DWP doesn't take away your benefits like dicks. That's okay. Awesomeness requires you to be alive. Just remember to practice kindness to yourself and others. When you're ready, you can release your awesomeness onto the world. Also, conforming to social standards is not necessarily good, just as not conforming is not necessarily bad. If your job is, for example, in a fracking company, fracking being a process that involves punch 
dumping carcinogens into the groundwater to release gas that is then burned, releasing CO2. Your socially acceptable job is making the world a worse place. And if you were to do something socially unacceptable, like, say, not doing that job, you'd be improving the world by making it harder for said company to do fracking. Whereas protesting the aforementioned fracking is not conforming to social standards, it often gets you put on a police radar. Normal is a privilege not all of us can have. Normal for those of us who aren't born into it means cutting off parts of yourself until you can fit, and that pain is not something anyone deserves. And cutting off parts of yourself will include cutting off some of the best parts. I am not going to do that because from the bottom of my soul, fuck that shit. I am going to use the power of the void to be so awesome that people need to increase their levels of chaotic kindness so as to handle me. The void is a space for those of us who are too queer, too freakish, those who even a lot of activists ignore, mock or sideline. This is for the polyamorous, the aromantic, the kinky, the gender folks, those whose realities are ugly and unmarketable, those who use micro-labels and neo-pronouns, because if humanity won't make room for us, we are going to make room in inhumanity. Abolish normal. Don't forget to validate me by liking, subscribing, commenting and giving me money.